All right, welcome back to the Search Informer video series. This video, we're going to be going over how to get hosting and how to connect it to your domain name. If you're this far in the video, you should have already chosen a domain name and you should have already had registered it. This is going to be a little bit more of a technical video, so you might have to go over it a couple of times if this is your first time registering a domain or setting up a hosting package or downloading WordPress. So basically, we've registered a domain name. That's going to be our business name. It's going to be where people can go to see our business. What we need now is we need a place to store it. So we're going to basically rent out a space on a server where all our files for our website are going to be stored. This server is going to be on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, so that our business is up and running even while we're sleeping. What we're going to want to do is navigate to bit.ly and former domain deals again. You're going to want to sign in and your name and password should be signing in automatically as long as you've got LastPass hooked up. If it's off for some reason, make sure you go ahead and find it in your extensions and turn it back on. If you haven't downloaded it yet, you can go back to the previous videos and see how to download LastPass. We're just gonna have to verify and hit continue. All right, once you log in, it should look something like this. I just had a message that let me know they were running a special. If I wanted to buy this new Google Suite plan, it's $5 a month. They'll, they'll put $25 into my Namecheap account. But for the example, I'm just gonna be focusing on getting my domain hosted. If you want the $25 credit, just sign up for the Google plan, pay the $5, get the $25 credit. Then you're gonna wanna come here and go to shared hosting. And what we're going to want to do is go with the most popular Stellar plan, which is 488. It's got unmetered disk space, unmetered bandwidth. You can put unlimited websites and it comes with the website builder. We want it to be in a U.S. data center. And if you pay, you can pay for the year or you can pay for the month. It's a lot easier just to pay for the year. Then you don't have to worry about going back and paying every month. Because what will happen is if you forget to pay for the month, They'll send you an email and if you don't respond to the email after a certain amount of time, your website will come down and somebody can buy your domain. And it happens a lot faster than you think because once we start building up these domains and backlinks and sharing the links, they're gonna have some value and they're gonna be worth some money. So people that are mining for these domains and selling them, they're gonna find them really quick and you lose all your work. It's happened to me before. I've lost a couple actually, not putting it on the other new feature and missing the email. So I'm going to hit add to cart. So our options here are we want to get a free .website domain. We don't care about the .website. Purchase a new domain. We want to use a domain that we own with Namecheap. Since we already bought a domain with Namecheap, we can just click here and it's going to be a lot easier to set up. And it's going to, there's a list right here. Here's my domain. I'm going to hit select. So now it's going to add the Stellar Plus plan to that domain. We're only paying for a month. Should be just paying for the year. I'll just update that after. Secure your site with positive SSL, $1.99 for the first year. You definitely want SSL to secure socket layer. Most websites are running them these days. If not, they get hacked really easily. And when we start doing SEO, we're definitely going to want that. So that brings our order only up to six dollars and change we're gonna hit confirm order pick how you're gonna pay for it credit card paypal fill out the information click to auto renew it so i don't forget and i'm gonna hit continue i'm gonna scroll down and check the order you're gonna want it to agree to the terms and services and then hit pay now okay i'm just gonna hit name cheap come to the home page check the message we got the order summary now what you're gonna want to do is go up to your your name up here hover over it and then you want to go to your dashboard. We're going to scroll down until we see our website here. And here's another thing I just wanted to point out. We got a free WhoisGuard. A lot of other websites will charge you $10 for the year for that. We didn't even pay $10 right now. We paid $6 and change. And what we're going to want to do is come over here and click on manage. So basically now we have our domain name and we have a hosting package. We have a business and we have it rented out for a month under $20. If you needed a space in a brick and mortar business, I mean, you you can't name a place that you're gonna be able to register a business name and, and pay for the rent for a month for under $20. Probably couldn't even do it for under two grand. Then we're gonna click on manage. On top of that, you have to pay somebody to run it. This is gonna be up and open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All right, what we're gonna wanna do now is you're gonna to wanna to check the email that you use when you purchase the, ho the hosting package. You're gonna get a receipt and then you're gonna get a hosting account details. This is the information you're going to want to have. You're going to have a URL. This is going to access your cPanel, your control panel for your hosting package. And then they're going to give you a cPanel username and a cPanel password. What you're going to want to do is open up a new browser. 
Control C, copy the control panel, URL, hit Control V. You're gonna wanna go back, copy the username, Control C, hit Control V to paste, go back, get the C panel password, Control C to copy, Control V to paste, and when that's done, we're gonna log in. We should get a message up here from LastPass, and what we're gonna wanna do is tell it yes so that it saves this information. See right here, we're gonna hit add, now that URL, the username and the password is saved. So next time we come to the cPanel, it's going to sign right in for us. I happen to have four, four different cPanels right now saved, but you should only have one. Alright, the first thing we're going to want to do is get it out of the way really quick. We're going to want to scroll down to email accounts right here under email. Click on email accounts. We can make whatever we want and it's going to be at our domain.com. You probably want to put support or services or your name. For now I'm going to make a f email and I'm going to change it after. I'm just going to make a generic support. You're going to have to enter a password. You can click here to generate the password. You want to control C and copy and then control V and paste so you have the p password in there twice. And you're just going to hit create account. So in the following videos when we're contacting people we're going to be want to use our email here and it's going to keep all our emails um, for different offers and different things that we're using all in one spot. Just to be safe, write down your email and write down your password and save it in a little note file somewhere. You should also do that with the information you got out of the email for the cPanel, the username, and that password. Okay, I just saved my email and my password down in a little notepad file on my desktop. I also saved the cPanel URL in that username and that password. And I suggest you do the same thing. Now we're gonna wanna hit back. All right, here's the email we just created. And if we wanna sign in, we're gonna hit access webmail. We're gonna pick um, one of these services. I like to use Roundcube and I'm gonna set it as default. And now we're signed into our email, support at searchinformer.com. We're gonna have one email, we're gonna open it up. So our username is gonna be the email. We have our password. And here's our settings for our incoming server and our outgoing server. When we need that information, we're just gonna keep it in the email. All right, now that we set up our email, we can go back to cPanel. We're gonna hit back. To install WordPress on our domain, we're gonna hit Softaculous Apps Installer. We're gonna click on WordPress. We're gonna leave it on Quick Install. We're gonna type our domain name right here. Directory would just leave blank. If you already had a website and you were trying to install a blog, you would put in directory blog and you would install WordPress in that folder. But we're using WordPress as our whole website, so we're just gonna leave that blank. If you wanna put a site in the description and you can, you can always change this later. I suggest you don't leave this as admin. Click the little key. It will generate a password for you. You might wanna copy and write that down. We're gonna put our admin email. That's the email that we just set up. Limit login attempts. We're going to open up advanced options. We're going to click on auto upgrade, auto upgrade WordPress plugins, auto upgrade WordPress themes, and we're going to select a theme. We can always change it later. It's just what your website's going to look like. We're going to put in the website. We want the email installation details like the name and the password to be sent to, and then we're going to click on install. It's going to come back. It's going to let you know that it was successful, where it was installed, and you're going to want to copy this URL down. This is always going to be how you sign into WordPress to edit your website. We're going to open up a new tab. It's always going to be your domain forward slash WP dash admin. And if you run into this, that's okay. It just means it needs a little more time. There's a propagation period where it takes a little bit of time for the email and the domain to hook itself up to each other. Okay, I found out what the problem was and I'm glad this happened on the video. I thought that the name servers were changed automatically because we bought the domain and the hosting package at the same company, but unfortunately it's not with this. So what we're gonna have to do is go to the username, hit dashboard, and when that's loaded up, you're gonna wanna scroll down, go to the domain that you wanna use and hit manage. And we're gonna scroll down again as it loads up. We're gonna wanna go over here to name servers and you can see it says Namecheap Basic DNS. You want to scroll down and click on Namecheap Web Hosting DNS. And then you want to click this 
green check mark that says save. See, DNS server update may take 48 hours to take effect. Okay, now it's under propagation period. This is a period of time where it takes for the name servers and the hosting package to connect to each other so that when people visit your URL, your website's gonna show up. Now it doesn't always take 48 hours, sometimes it takes five, 10 minutes, but just realize that if it does take a little bit of time, it's not your fault, there's nothing you can do about it. You're just gonna have to keep checking the your domain forward slash WP dash admin and when everything's propagated, we'll be able to log into WordPress and start editing our site. All right, it's been about 15, 20 minutes. That's all it took. What you're gonna to wanna to do is go to yourdomain.com forward slash WP dash admin.com and it should bring you to this site. This is where you log into WordPress so you can edit your site. You're gonna to wanna to find the email that you sent your WordPress details to and get your username and your password and log in. Put your name and your password in and hit enter, you should be right on this page. This is how we're gonna edit our website. And in this video, that's about as far as we're gonna get. So, if you're at this point, we should have had a domain, it should be registered. We should have a hosting company, and our domain and our hosting should be connected together or propagated so that we can come to our website, sign in, and start editing our website. If there's a few things you wanna take away from this video, it's after everything's propagated, your domain forward slash WP dash admin. That's how you sign into your WordPress. You should have that URL and that username and password saved. Your domain.com forward slash cPanel is how you sign into your control panel for your hosting. You should have that saved, the username and the password. And when you signed into your email, you should have that URL saved, that username and that password. If you get stuck trying to do any of this, you can go to the Namecheap website. You wanna scroll down. You wanna click on here, chat with a live person, follow the instructions, and someone will answer your questions. That's it for this video. We're gonna be moving on to the next one, and we'll start editing our website.